in, in northwestern part of Wisconsin, and um, it w the near the nearest Muslim population is like two hours away. Uh, we we grew up in a non-denominational family, and uh, and so technically, you know, yeah, my uh, my mother's side of the family was Methodist, and my father's side of the family were uh, was um, was uh, was Lutheran, uh, but uh, but my uh, since I was raised by my mother and my father and mother divorced when uh, when I was one, so I didn't have get a chance to, uh, I mean, have that family environment. So we may, we may have believed in God, but we like we never really mentioned you know anything about God. You know we, we were non-denominational, so we didn't go to church or anything like that. And uh, and I guess uh, there was one time I I went to. Uh, uh, when I was a kid growing up, my friend asked me to come to church with her, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go to church, you know. So I, I went to church with her, and as soon as my mom found out, you know, she drugged me out. And, um, uh, but uh, my father's side, like with my grandmother, she's a strict Lutheran, so she tried to, uh, uh, like, every, like for birthdays and, and Christmas and everything, you know, she tried her best to, uh, like, she give me some maybe crosses or some you no know, Christian books or whatever type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I may hold them or or I, I may wear them or I may read them, but uh, you no, know, not. Of course, I was still a kid growing up. I was you no know, nothing was really hitting me. About a month before my 14th birthday, uh, you no, know, we we finally got a computer at our house. You know, which. Other people in my, in my classroom already uh, at school already had computers, you know, at their houses, and I'm like, I felt like I'm like the only one that didn't have a computer. Uh, so, so we finally get a computer, and uh, and um, and so if I ever have to do homework, I can finally do homework instead of borrowing a little computer from school and uh, and bring it home and do my homework, which you know kind of makes you like feel like oh you're, you're like you're nothing, you know, so this. And so we find a good computer, get all excited, you know. I seen uh I seen my brother like download uh Yahoo Messenger and MSN Messenger and uh so I was like, okay, you know, me at thirteen, almost fourteen, you know, I'm in the exploration stage. And I knew at the time, you know, yeah, I, I was starting okay, I wanna search for something. I'm 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 now I'm starting to be interested in religion and whatnot and uh and just I guess trying to find the right one. And so uh, I just was randomly, you know, going through different chat rooms, and I went into this one chat room. I don't think it, w I don't think it even was an Islamic chat room, but I think it was just some kind of chat room. I don't remember which one. But I, I, at that time, I was, you know, fascinated with uh, uh, cultures and people from different countries and everything else. You know, I, ever, and you know, especially ever since I learned my my. Uh, what my ancestry is, you know, when I was uh, nine years old, we had to do a little homework assignment uh, on that. Uh, that and they ask you know to, I guess, uh, write what you I guess your your ancestral background is. So finally found out, you know, okay, you know, I'm like I'm like oh half Norwegian and Swedish and British and Irish and German and Dutch, you know, like I met this uh, one brother. He was. Uh, it was a Sunni Pakistani brother uh, that was uh, that lived in Dubai, and and he, you know, he told me his name and uh, and he told me that uh, uh, that he that he was that he was a Muslim. Mind you, this is uh, this is two years af after 9/11. So even after 9/11, I never even heard of the word Muslim or Islam or anything like that. I might not have been 100% actively looking, but you know, you kind of like you, you had that. You finally got the curious side of things, you know. You want to check different things out, you know. And well, if religion is one of them, okay, religion is one of them, you know. You uh, you find out uh, whether it's religion or culture or whatever, you know. So you're in the exploration stage. So I guess I stumbled across, you know, religion and <coughs> and uh, the one of the people when I when I when the guy told me that he was Muslim. Um, I was like, you know, what is that, you know, and and he told me, you know, basics of Islam and what what Islam is about, and and uh, me and him were talking for about a good uh, about mo uh, 
month and a half, two months, and uh, and then and then at the time I, I finally met a couple more you know uh, Muslims you know on Yahoo Messenger, to when they used to have chat rooms, and uh, and so and this time you know a couple of them yeah might have been across the world, but a few of them were here in in, in USA, and one of them I had a little bit more connection to because uh, because I guess he was in Chicago. Um, and so he he wasn't that far away from uh, away from me compared to the other people, and so um, uh, so I so they were all in you know, uh, telling me about Islam and and by that time you know it's already uh, uh, it's already December of uh, two thousand and three, and because <laughs> when I first started my exploration uh, into uh, into Islam when I was first introduced it was it was September of two thousand three, and so. Uh, and so here it is, December two thousand three, and and I, and the people I met online, they they finally finally sent me some books and some materials, and um, with me, I'm a person that that likes to read, and so I I I open up the first book, and uh, and I was uh, reading, I, and and I would I was sitting I was sitting next to my mom while she's on the computer, and I would read to her too, and about about Islam. Then about a month before I convert to Islam, you know, I decided after you no know, after that much reading, I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stop eating pork now, you know, and I never really did like pork anyway, <laughs> you know, probably uh, of course this is probably before you know we found out about beef and chicken hot dogs, you know, so that's probably the only thing I'd miss was was the hot dogs, and uh, and so uh, it's like you know I was like okay. There was, uh, but there was one time where my mom, uh, uh, like after my after my week of n not eating pork, all of a sudden my mom like made this one dish and uh, and she kind of like you know knew I couldn't like resist you know eating it, so uh, so I ate and she's like you know oh I I I I knew you couldn't do it you know type of thing, and but uh, but a after that you know I I never had another another bite of pork after that and then. Then when it came to March of two thousand four, about um, about a week before I converted to Islam, I uh, I started. I had this, you know, kind of like regular kind of like winter scarf that you put around your uh, neck. You know, I kind of put it on my head, you know, since I didn't have anything, you know, bigger. And so I put I put put on my head, you know, to to you know practice, you know, see see what it feels like, and uh, um, and then uh, then after like that week was up. Uh, uh, it was on on a Saturday, March twentieth of two thousand four, and that's when I decided I'm uh, gonna okay. Uh, I was talking to, talking to the brother from Chicago, and I was like saying, okay, I'm gonna go to, uh, finally go to the masjid today, you know, which is about a two hour drive for me, and I mean, of course for me, you know, you're thinking everything's open, but of course I guess at that time since it's it's a small Muslim community. The masjid is not open, you know, on normally on Saturdays, and so. Uh, but I, I had, I had the secretary of the masjid's number, so I, I gave him a call, and I'm like, you know, uh, I'm like here at the masjid, I want to, you know, come in, right? Uh, but, uh, but before that, uh, uh, when I was talking to the brother on the phone, I was telling him I want to go to the masjid. He was saying that, uh, um, well, before you do that, you know, oh, I want you to convert to Islam. I was like, Okay, I guess I just need, I guess I just needed that push, you know. Uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't even have thought about converting or not converting. I mean, it just never came to me. Just, otherwise, I probably would have just been reading till today, you know. <laughs> and because um, uh, I guess I didn't, I didn't uh, know there was such thing as I you know probably like conversions and everything else. I'm like, okay, you know. And so, uh, so he called up an, another brother, you know, to be the witness to my shahada. And and while while I was saying, uh, uh, while I was saying the shahada, you know, and I, and and I was repeating after him the shahada, and I was getting like goosebumps all over my body and everything else. Here it is, like 9 a.m. in the morning on Saturday. And so, uh, so after that, like we we hang up, we hunt up, you know, like promptly after that. And I go downstairs and I. I tell my mom, oh, I converted to Islam, you know, like right away, and, she, and of course, right away, she like she got mad at me, and and uh, she's like started yelling at me and everything else, and I was like ah, and 
But um, but after about an hour, because we did have plans to go to the masjid anyway, you know, we both agreed. And uh, after an hour, she yeah, she calmed down and we got ready and we left for the masjid. And so, uh, so when we arrived at the masjid, we found out it's closed. So I called the secretary uh, uh, of the masjid. I was like, we had the masjid, but it's closed. You know, I guess he only lived maybe a couple minutes away. So, <coughs> so he came. Uh, he came to uh, came to the masjid, opened it up, kind of gave us a little tour around. Very small, but still, you know, it's something. So, uh, so my mom was telling me in the car on their way there that she said, "Oh, I want to convert to Islam too." It's like, okay, you know. And so, um, so uh, she, uh, so we went to the masjid, toured around, and before we were about to leave, we we're in the masjid area. And I was like, "Oh, my mom wants to convert to Islam too." So, you know, he, he said the shahada to her, you know, and she repeated it. And, uh, and, uh, and so before we left, you know, uh, he gave us, you know, uh, uh, a Qur'an that was from the masjid and uh, I guess um, a, book holder, uh, a book holder for the Qur'an. And I guess one of those uh, how to pray uh, 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 books, I guess they had laying around. Like, okay, you know, so, of course, right away I went into, like, okay, reading the, reading the, uh, Quran and the commentary first. So even till this day, I'm still I'm still yet to finish reading the Quran for the first time. You know, after 11 years of being Muslim, and because uh, you know I'm taking my time and reading it. You know, trying to get it all in depth first, and then maybe after I I finish reading the Quran, uh, Quran with the commentary, uh, then I then I'll like just read it normally. Right? And so um, so I think it's going to be like a big milestone for me once I <laughs> finish reading it for the first time. But that that. That was my part of, of Islam, you know, uh, of converting to Islam. Then, you know, uh, of course, when I first converted to Islam, you know, first became a Sunni, you know, Muslim. Then, then nine months later, you know, became a Shia Muslim. When I first converted to Islam, uh, I guess, you know, especially for, uh, for a new Muslim, the very, uh, the very important time for a new Muslim, I guess, is, 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 is in the first few months, you know, of, of, you know, of Islam. Uh, and so, when I uh, converted, uh, converted, you know, I was doing my own reading probably for a good um, a month or two. And in the, in and in that time, I I, I met uh, met a Sunni imam uh, back in Florida, uh, and uh, I'm, I th I think I met him o over chat or something like that. I don't remember how I met him, but uh, I met him and. Me and him became really good friends. We started uh, talking. He was, he was helping me with uh, memorizing surahs and everything. He wouldn't get off the phone until I memorized uh, all the surah, and and so I could be on the phone for a good two hours until I memorized that surah, and and so uh, so uh, we'd be talking, and and then uh, uh, at that time, since you know I got really involved into Islam and and. Praying uh, and doing all that stuff, you know, uh, to the best of my ability. <laughs> I told them, you know, I want to. Um, uh, uh, I was interested. In, oh, yeah, I want to go to you know an Islamic school, you know. And so, um, uh, so f found about this Islamic school, and I guess down in Chicago, uh, strict Islamic school. I guess you know, you have to dress a certain way and act a certain way. And I finally, I when, so then I finally get there in um, in uh, beginning of uh, August, you know, of uh, two thousand four. I, uh, you know, I was there for boarding, so I, I, I stayed there for I stayed there, you know, uh, all day and all night, you know, because boarding school. Uh, I, re I realized quickly, you know, especially after. After about a week being there, I didn't quite like the surroundings in my area. It felt more like a like a prison to me. Like they're, cause it's a mainly like, Daisy uh, uh, Daisy uh, Islamic school. So it was like really strict. You had a uh, like barbed wire fence, you know, around the school. You know, they were saying, oh, that's keeping the people outside coming in. And but to me, it's like it's like and to me, it's like oh, you're like keeping me in. You know. And they would they would lock the gates at night, and, and on top of locking the gates at night, they would lock all the doors uh, around the building. And it's like, and even if I wanted to go outside in the middle of the night, I can't, you know. And I 
there has been a few times where I've seen, okay, the gate open. I just step maybe 10 feet outside the gate. They're telling me to come back inside, you know. I was like, I, we're, we're, across, we're across the street from a graveyard. There's no, no, nobody in sight. We're like in the middle of nowhere. And you tell me to come back inside. And it's like, makes me feel like a prisoner. So I only lasted about like a month, a uh, month and a half there. And, and I left. And, um, and so, uh, and short, shortly after I left, uh, that's, uh, uh, and came back, uh, came back home to Wisconsin. I, um, I, uh, I went back into Yahoo Messenger and, and I met this, uh, uh, one, uh, Indian brother, uh, uh, he was, li he was, he lived in India at the time and, and he, that's when he mentioned that he's, uh, that he's, uh, a, a Bukhra Shia. I'm like, you know, what's Shia? And I never hear it. It's like, it's like from, from back from day one, and like, what's Islam? What's Muslim? I'm like, what's Shia? You know, I never heard of that. And, uh. So he, he he was telling me, you know, what Shia Islam is about, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, and um, and then when when I mean, he only got maybe on the bare basics, and then and then uh, I don't know when I was like, okay, I want to want to learn more. He's like, before before I do that, uh, I have to I have to get permission from my leader or whatever type of thing, and, and I guess we were like waiting forever, and and in the meantime, while we were waiting. I met this uh, uh, Iranian Shia brother, you know, of the Isna Ashari, at a, at a uh, university there or something like that. And, but he, to the best of his uh, English ability, he was trying to you know, talk, tell me about Shia Islam, and he was talk he was talking to me for a while, and then he finally um, he finally sent me like you know, uh, in the course of maybe a couple of months, he sent me uh, probably a couple boxes of the books, and uh, and. So, uh, one, uh, the first book I picked up, you know, was really like the Know Your Islam type of book, you know, uh, the so stuff kind of I already know, but kind of also a little touch of basis about basic Shia Islam. And so, uh, I read that, like, okay, you know, uh, but then I, uh, then, then the second book I picked up was, uh, Then I Was Guided. And so I picked up that book and I read it, uh, I read it all the way through, and and as as soon as I got done uh, reading that, I was like, I know I, I want to become a Shia Muslim, you know. And so I, I looked up I looked up online, you know, at the Shia dot org under the Islamic organizations there, and <laughs> and so I uh, looked up the I looked up you know like the nearest one uh, near Shia organization to me and. Yeah, you had uh, Minneapolis, uh, and then you had Chicago. Those are like the two closest ones to me. Like, okay, I'm looking through all the names, and and like 99% of them just were just regular, like regular names. And like, I want to like talk to like an imam or something like that, you know? Because at the time, I didn't, I didn't know, you know, what what I didn't know, like, okay. The uh, Shias are uh, uh, the sh uh, Shia leaders are called Mulan and so on. I say, of course, you know, at that time I'm still at the Imam stage, you know. Like, I'm looking for someone that has like a title, you know. So I finally found um, um, only one person out of the entire list that had a title, you know, and that was uh, the Mulan here at IEC Husseini uh, in Chicago, and Mulan Sayyid Mahbub Mahdi. And I was like, uh, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna call him. And I guess uh, it was his own, I guess, personal cell phone number, you know, that was on the website. So I called him up. It was like, it's like, you know, nine, ten o'clock at night. And uh, so I call him up. You know, I'm in my like, I'm in my room and everything else. You know, no one can hear me. <laughs> and so I was, uh, talk I was talking to him, and um, I was saying oh, how, like, I just got done reading, then I was guided, and I was like, oh, I want to know, when to become a Shia, how do you, how do you, how do you become a Shia? He's like, oh, since you already said the Shahada, just say, Ashhadu wa na'alin waliullah. Like, okay. So, instead of that, he's like, okay, now you're a Shia, you know? And, um, so, when the Iranian brother sent me some books, he also sent me some, uh, uh, materials too, like, you know, like a turba. And so, and, so I got the, Along with the books, I had the How to Pray book too. So I started reading from that book, and that's, that's how I um, 
started praying the Shia way. And but of course, the first month after converting to Shia Islam, it was, it was um, I was still at the, like, you know, transition stage in a in a way where like you were, like, you know, you still have your 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 Sunni people who you were talking to online, you know, trying to say oh. And I'll stay a Sunni, you know, and trying to pull you both ways. And here I am, I'm being torn apart, I'm being all confused. And, and I'm like, oh, which, uh, so I, I called up, uh, called up Mullah, and I'm like, you know, say something to me that, uh, uh, that will, you know, keep me, you know, keep me on the path of Shia Islam, you know, because, uh, you know, tell them all the confusion. Because at, at times I would be praying the Shia way, and then at other times I may be praying the Sunni way. So I was like, I was literally like doing both ways. And, um, and, and so I don't know what he said to me. I don't remember what he said to me, but he said something. And, and from that, from that day on, you know, I never, I never looked back at, uh, at Sunni Islam again. So when I first, uh, converted to Shia Islam, which was in December, 2004, about nine months after I convert, converted to Sunni Islam, uh, then, um, uh, of course, since I had my how to pray the Shia way book and the, and the and the turba and everything, you know, uh, since I was, I was isolated in generally from any type of uh, Muslim community, you know, Sunni or Shia, and so I was, I was doing that for the first, um, first uh, few years, and then uh, about four years of being Muslim, then I finally, uh, uh, finally got a chance to uh, move to Chicago, and. So when I moved to Chicago, I was about half an hour away from from the near Shia community. So whenever, so I I went there, you know, as much as I could, you know, which is not very often since at the time I didn't have a car or anything, and so and I didn't know any you know Shias at the time uh, in the community except except Molana, and I was like, um, but uh, but there's. But I think uh, he gave me like maybe a number to someone, and they might have picked me up a couple of times, and I and I and I, I went there a few times, uh, and t but things got a little bit more better after 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 I um, moved to, moved to a, a different place, and I finally got my own car, and uh, and I so I went there a little bit a little bit more than uh, than I did when I when I when I first moved to Chicago, and. Uh, but, but of course, many times, uh, probably even till today, even after eleven years, I, 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 when I, whenever I go there, I mean, I don't know about the other couple of converts that might be there. I see, I don't know about them, but I know for me, I don't like, I don't feel that as much accepted there. You know, it's like since it's majority, you know, uh, if not all, uh, uh, daisies there, is, uh, and uh, I feel like I'm. Whenever I go, I'm like the only white person there, you know, and and I don't have oh everyone coming to me and oh having me be introduced or anything like that, you know, it's just oh uh, they're they're with they're with their clique and and I'm just isolated by myself. That uh, that I started going there, that I made uh, I made friends with I guess uh, Milana's Milana's wife at the time. Major uh, like. I guess uh, majority of the people, I guess, didn't want to really associate with her too much, you know. Even though, yeah, they may say her they, their salams to her, but for one, yeah, she's not, she's not Daisy, she's Iraqi, you know. And and at the same time, you know, uh, to uh, to them, they think that she, uh, they're uh, that uh, she's too religious for them, you know, because she's dress dressing with the, uh, with a proper hijab and 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 jilbab, you know. Uh, uh, Abaya and um, uh, and j they you know of course as 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 the, with the women they just dress their normal shawl kameez you know no proper hijab way type of thing. After maybe a couple of years of being in Chicago, I I finally started uh finally started wearing the 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 jilbab along with my hijab because before that I was just wearing the long sleeve shirt and long pants, and so I finally started wearing wearing the jilbab and of course. The, that doesn't even make anything any better, you know, in a way where, of course, now I'm just isolating myself even more, you know. It's like, now I have to find a group of people that, that okay, uh, that would accept me okay, what what I'm wearing now, and now I'm not dressing like they are. 
I enjoyed reading the stories of uh, of the of the Ahl Bayt, you know, and not uh, not anyone specific or anything, but um, I may uh, I may like you know compare to like you know some of them, you know, I may have maybe some similar situations in some some ways and and so you have that kind of little connection on that part and uh and so uh you know it's just it's like an i guess an, an undescribable feeling it's not something that I, that you can really like describe it's just it's just there you just know it just have that feeling mm-hmm.